Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. 104th Maverick checking in with another video. Here we go with another mission editor tutorial. I've noticed that um, a lot of people, including myself initially to start off with, are having a lot of people with the carrier tacans and getting the, the carrier set up properly. So this video is going to be about that. I'm going to show you guys how to properly set up your carrier battle groups and get your TACANs and your ILSs working and all that sort of stuff so that your carriers are actually like in, in a box patrol pattern. So we'll go ahead and do that now. We're on the, the beautiful uh, Persian Gulf map, um, the, the brand new from Eagle Dynamics. It's been out, it's been out for a little while now. We uh, recently got these two airports added to the north of the map. Absolutely fantastic map, guys. If you don't have this yet, dig into your pockets and go and grab it because it's easily the best terrain available um, for the game so far. Right, anyway, we'll get in and we'll get ourselves some aircraft carriers. So what we'll do, um, we'll set up our carrier battle group in the Persian Gulf and... Um, We'll, we'll set up a little box patrol pattern so that they stay here. So we'll get ourselves sorted out with some ships. So we come over to the left hand side and we click on the add or modify ship group icon here. And then we just click on the map to add any ship. Now the pre-selected one um, will come up on the right hand side here. You see we've got the name, ship, group, country and what type of um, ship that it is. So we're already selected on the, the good old US of A. We'll um, now select the USS John C. Stennis from the type. Right, and what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and give this group a name straight away. So we'll call it the Blue Carrier Group. And what we also want to do is we want to change this name here where it says Unit Name because this is the name that if you're in a multiplayer mission when someone takes off or lands this will be the name that shows. So if we left that how it is right now it would say 104th Maverick has taken off from Unit number 001. So we're going to change that so that it says the John C. Stennis. Alright, so we've added in that information there. So now when someone takes off from it or lands, it's going to say 104th Maverick has taken off from the John C. Stennis CVN-74 or has landed at the John C. Stennis CVN-74, which I think makes a, a little bit more sense. We'll go ahead and we'll set the skill to excellent. This is where we can set the frequency of the carrier, so we want to actually talk to the carrier on a communication radio rather than a navigation radio. This is what frequency would set. So we're going to go ahead, the default is 1275, we're going to go and change that to anything we want. We're going to change that to 131.5. And we're going to leave the modulation. Um, as it is. Right, so you're going to notice here that activate TACAN is set in the advanced options and this is what's confusing a lot of people, okay? What we actually want to do, guys, is we want to delete that. We're not interested in that right now. So we're just going to delete that so we have no advanced options in there. That's totally blank and we're going to set up our box patrol pattern here now, okay? So the carrier will start there. We're going to drag that position a little bit to the south and what we want them to do is we want them to steam ahead and then turn and then go back downwind and then turn and then go back upwind. So we're going to set that up now. You'll notice that the default speed is set to 11 knots. Normally the carrier's always aiming to have 30 knots of wind across the deck. There is a little bit of a bug in DCS right now where you sort of slide around the deck in some high winds. I'm not sure if that's fixed already, but to make that bug a little bit more manageable, what we do is we set this speed to around about 20 knots at the moment. If you're watching this video in a couple of months time, this might not be a, an issue anymore and you can go ahead and just set 30 knots in this speed here. But for the purpose of this video, we're going to just set it at 18 knots. Now we're going to click on add because we want to add another waypoint and we're going to select where we want our first waypoint to be. So we're going to have a waypoint there and then we're going to have another waypoint here and then back downwind again, and then back to the starting position. All right, now obviously that's a little bit of a mess. So we can right click here and then just start moving these waypoints around just to make them a little bit more, a little bit more structured. There we go, there looks, looks like a, a nice rough box. And if you wanted the carrier to keep going round and round, it's as simple as basically just clicking on the, uh, the last waypoint here, go to add again, and then just start adding some more waypoints around here. So the carrier's basically going to just keep going around this box patrol pattern, guys until he runs out of fuel, or he runs out of waypoints. Obviously he's not going to run out of fuel. The carrier won't, his escort ships might, but the carrier won't. Everybody might get a little bit hungry, but 
Right, so anyway, we've got our box patrol pattern set up. So the carrier's going to steam ahead 18 knots to waypoint 2, go to 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, all the way around. It's going to keep doing that until it runs out of waypoints. So now we want to actually set up our TACAN and our ICLS guys, okay? So we click on the ship again. We go up to this tab here, which is the Triggered Actions tab, okay? So we're not interested in anything here. We're only interested in the Triggered Actions tab. Click on Triggered Actions. We go to Add. We select Perform Command. And we come down to Activate TACAN. Now, because we're all trained professionals, we're not going to set this as a random TACA number, okay? The CVN number of the John C. Stennis is CVN number 74, so we're going to set our TACAN channel as 74. We're going to put the prefix in here, the call sign is STN, so that when our pilots tune the, the TACAN frequency, they know which um, ship they're tuned into. STN for the Stennis, and if you notice the drop down box for unit, we're going to assign that to the John C. Stennis. Boom. And that's because we put the John C. Stennis name in up there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add in the activation for the ICLS. So again, we're just going to click Add. Perform Command. Activate ICLS. And we're going to set it onto Channel 1. And select the unit for John C. Stennis. You don't have to put anything in the name. I'm just going to put STN again. So you see we've got activate um, 74 x-ray for the Stennis and activate ICLS for the Stennis as well on the triggered action. So when the, the mission starts, the TACAN is going to be active and the ICLS is also going to be active as well. However, there is a little bit of a catch. We do need to set up some trigger actions, which I'm going to show you now, okay? So what we're going to have to do now to get the TACANs to work properly for the whole mission is go up and set some triggered actions using the triggered menu. Now, this is pretty simple, just make sure you follow the steps that I'm going to um, show you here and you shouldn't really get this wrong. So we're going to go and set a new trigger action. We're going to call it um, TACAN ILS1. Alright, we're going to set the condition, which is simply going to be time more. Now all that means, guys, is that you're telling the game that after 10 seconds into the mission, once the time is more than 10 seconds, you want the game to do an action. So that action that we want to do is an AI task set. So we're going to click on AI task set, go to the drop down menu, and there's our triggers that we set up on the carrier. There's the TACAN and there's the ICLS. So we're going to select this one first. So once 10 seconds has passed in the mission, we're going to activate the TACAN on the ship. We're also going to act AI task set. We're also going to activate the ICLS on the ship as well. Now we also just need to do one more thing here, which is add a little flag. So we're going to go to flag on. And we're going to select this as flag number one. Now you can select it as anything you want, just for an example. We'll just change it to flag 101. So you see what we've got here is 10 seconds into the mission, the carrier is going to activate the TACAN, it's going to activate the ICLS, and it's going to turn on flag 101. And again, just to, just to specify guys, it doesn't matter what this number is, as long as it's not the same number as any other flag that you're using in the mission. Alright, so as some of you have noticed that, hey Maverick, this is all good, I did all this Maverick, it still didn't work. <laughs> so what happens at the moment in DCS is when our carrier group gets to a waypoint, it seems to turn off the TACAN and the ICLS for some reason. If you're watching this video in a couple of months time, this might not be a problem anymore, but um, for the guys at the moment, this is what you want to do to fix that, okay? We want to add in one more trigger action. So we're going to call this TACAN ICLS2. I should really be calling it ICLS, but we're going to, we're going to, don't kill me guys, we're going to call it ICLS, no one get upset. Um, we're going to go time more, so sorry, we're going to do time since flag. So remember, we turned flag 101 on guys, okay? So time since flag. Flag 101, and how many seconds? We're going to set that as 600 seconds, which is 10 minutes. So we're telling the game that when flag 101 comes on, 600 seconds after that, I want you to do an action. So 
So 600 seconds after flag 101 comes on, I want you to again do the tasks um, set or the task push. Activate the TACAN. New. Task set. Activate the ICLS. And then we're going to turn off flag 101. And then we're going to turn it back on again. All right, guys, so what's going to happen? At 600 seconds, which is 10 minutes, after flag 101 comes on, which happens here, remember, 10 seconds after the start of the mission, we turn on flag 101, sorry. But then 10 minutes after that happens, we're telling the game to activate the TACAN again, turn on the ICLS again, but then turn off flag 101, and then turn it on again. And we're going to make sure that this trigger is set to a switched condition trigger. Now the first one, when you initially turn on 101, that can just be once, because we only want to turn that on once at the start of the mission. But it's very important that the second trigger is selected as a switched condition. Because what will happen is when we turn flag 101 off and then back on again, because it's a switch condition, it's going to trigger this action again, guys. So 600 seconds after this happens for the first time, this sequence is going to happen again. And it's just going to keep repeating itself, guys. It's keep going to, going to go round and round because we have this set as a switch condition trigger. So for the, the whole time that the mission's running, every 600 seconds or 10 minutes, your carrier group is going to activate its um, TACAN and it's going to activate its ICLS. This way your TACAN will be working for the full mission time, guys, uh, with your carrier having waypoints. Now, a lot of mission designers need that. Um, for example, if you're just running carrier landing training, you can have a carrier that starts here and just sails forward with only one waypoint at the top, and you're talking about a, a good couple of hundred miles there. So that's like 300 miles. So you're... That's going to be a good couple of hours that you guys are going to be training and you don't need any waypoints. But if, like for example, on the 104 server, we host missions for 24, 48 hours in a row sometimes. So we need the carrier. The carrier can't obviously sail straight forward for four, two or three days. So we need it to hit waypoints and turn around. So that's how you would get around this issue, guys. We're going to go and jazz up our little carrier group now and give it some escorts and stuff like that. I'll show you guys how we do that. It's nice and easy. We're just going to go up to the tab here. Add in a second unit, I'm going to select as the Oliver ha Hazard Perry. And we've clicked on this little button, this little tank icon down here that shows you the models of the units when you zoom in, which is really handy. So you can zoom in and you can see to scale where everything's going to be. So you can go out here and so we'll put the first ship here. And we'll just quickly measure his distance, make sure it's something sensible. Yeah, 1.3 miles, that's nice and sensible. We'll add another escort ship in which will be the Normandy. And we're going to put him on this side here, a little, a little flank guard. We'll make sure he's about 1.2 miles or something, 1.4, that's fine, 1.4 miles away is fine. And if we wanted to, guys, we could actually add in a second aircraft carrier for this, all right? So for example, we could add in the, the Tarawa. Hope I've said that right. <laughs> so we'll go here, we'll select the LHA number one. So this is the aircraft, ca this is our um, amphibious assault ship, the landing carrier for the Harriers and the helicopters and stuff. So we can put him in the same group as the CVN carrier, all right? But we need to do the, the we need to set up a TACAN and all that stuff for him as well. So we would just go back into this tab again, guys. Triggered actions, go to add, perform command, activate TACAN, all right, now we're going to just have to go back and name this unit in a little second, but we're going to leave it on number one, okay? Because if you notice, LHA is the number one amphibious assault ship. So we're going to leave the TACAN channel on number one. We're going to change the call sign, the prefix, to TAR for Tarawa, so that again, if someone tunes the frequency, they know which one it's going to be. And then we're going to come back and we're going to name this unit. So if we select it right now, it would be unit 003. We don't really want that. We're a, prof we're a trained professional. So now when we select off, go back in, and then we can look, we can select that as a USS Tarama. So there we go guys, we've got activate TACAN 74 X-ray for the Stennis, 
ICLS for this tennis and the Tarawa Takan on one x-ray. So, um, so we're going to go up, up quickly and just add this information in here. You can click, press clone here to clone the same trigger and then just change it from the list. Activate the Takan one x-ray for the Tarawa and we'll do the same here but I'll do it new. So we click new, we go to task set, activate one x-ray for the carrier group. Which is so it looks nice and neat. So there we go, we've got a Takan for the Stennis, Takan for the Tarawa, Takan for the Stennis, Takan for the Tarawa. And we could add in another escort ship if we wanted to here. So there we go guys. Now we have a carrier battle group that's going to patrol the Persian Gulf for a good number of hours at 18 knots. Um, the Takan for both carriers, Stennis and Tar Tarawa, are going to activate every 10 minutes. Um, so you guys shouldn't have any issues at all with um, finding your aircraft carriers and coming on board. One quick thing we'll run through right at the end now is jazzing up your carriers and making them look a little bit more sexy, guys. Getting some static units on here and making it look nice and pretty. Very easy to do thanks to Eagle Dynamics' new system with the, the show models here that we've got. So we're going to go across to the left and go to add or modify a static object. Click on that. We're going to click on the boat. We're going to get a fart right on the boat, guys. Look at that. <laughs> So we're going to go up to this uh, menu up on the right, and we're going to click Planes from here. Alright, so we got a, what do we get first? We got an A10, so we're going to change this to the Lot 20 F18. Now because the, the, the model is so good on this, guys, you want to be careful with how many of these models that you put on the ship, alright? Because you're going to end up getting low FPS if you put too many of them on. If you really want to go to town and put loads of Hornets on your ships, don't use the Lot 20 Hornet. Use the default, just run of the mill standard F-18C that comes in the default game, rather than the, the DCS F-18C. We're going to change the skin so it looks a little bit more appropriate. And now what we're going to do is we're going to assign this to it. We're going to click Offset Fixation first, and then we're going to assign it to a Link Unit. We're going to assign this to the John C. Stennis. And we're going to start placing these guys around where we want them to be. So you see we've got our heading icon up here. So we're just going to zoom in and we're going to get them nice and lined up. And we can just simply copy and paste this. We're going to give it a name. Just so we can track them in our unit list. We see we've got a unit list and you look at this, um, the static lists now. You see I've got one there, Stennis Static. So I'm just going to copy this now. Left control C to copy, and then left control V to paste. Boom! So there's two, right? So we'll put two on that elevator. We'll put another two bros over here. We'll put some. This is Jurassic Park, guys. This area of the carrier is called Jurassic Park. Um, the, the Hornet pilots started calling it Jurassic Park because this is where they would park the F-14 Tomcats. So, uh, shots fired, guys. Some shots fired. Unfortunately, until we get the, the Heat Blur F-14, the Tomcat models that we have in the sim are absolutely awful. So I don't use them very often in um, the 104th missions, but well, for, the, for the sake of this, for, for the sake of Jurassic Park, we'll put some Tomcats over here. So you always want to make sure, guys, that no part of the aircraft goes over the red and white line, alright? So you see the red and white line here, we don't want any parts of the aircraft over that line because this is the landing area. So again, I'm just going to copy and paste. Now don't worry about the wings here, guys, the, the wings fold when you save the mission. So if you see here, look, we're going to... Just you see that the wings are out there, we're going to come back to that and you'll see that those wings, once we save the mission, those wings will go away. I'm going to get some um, C and C. And you want to make sure it's inside these lanes as well. The inside lane, you want to make sure the aircraft's not crossed. If you want to send it up on the elevators. If the elevators aren't moving, it's not so much of a problem. But hopefully we're going to have elevators that move one day, so you want to make sure that stuff isn't getting broken. Nice, nice. We're getting there, guys. We're getting there. If we wanted to, we could put hornets all the way down one of the cat tracks or whatever we wanted to do. 
at the moment she's looking pretty good. Again, don't worry about the wings here. Because the wings will fold when you save. So we're going to go up and save this mission. We'll save it as carrier tutorial. You see all the wings on the aircraft now fold. Yeah, we're looking good. So there you go, guys. There you go. You have a carrier battle group that patrols the Persian Gulf with its escorts. You have a, a, a carrier that um, the Harriers can land on as well. Sorry, I don't know why that, <laughs> why that was so difficult to say. And um, you also have your ICLS and your TACANs working, and you have some nice static objects on your carrier group. So let's just... We'll go up to Customize. External Views. F10 will select all. We'll resave the mission and we'll go and check this out. Just like that, guys. Welcome to the Persian Gulf. Welcome on board to John C. Stennis. I hope this helped, guys. If, um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section. I will do my best to get back to you. If you liked the video, please hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And uh, yeah, stay tuned. I will come out with some more videos on the mission editor, doing some more tutorials to help you guys out so that you can be building your own missions, doing your own scenarios, and uh, having good fun with your friends, just like I do. Top Gun and Volleyball, guys. I'll see you next time. Maverick out.